book lovers my name is Carrie and this is spines and spoilers it is also part two of my reindeer readathon reading vlog um, first off I have some kind of bad news I broke my antlers they're they're not feeling too hot they're not doing very well so sadly it looks like I must retire the antlers for now um, maybe I'll get another pair, but for now, we're gonna switch to a Santa hat, which is totally, definitely not too small for my head. This is definitely not cutting off blood flow right now. Nope, not at all. R.I.P. reindeer antlers. We barely knew ye. This looks fucking terrible. I'm committing though. This is part two of my Reindeer Readathon reading vlog. Reindeer Readathon is an annual reading event that is hosted by Breakeven Books. Um, it also has several co-hosts. I'll make sure to list some of the related videos and the people who are contributing to this event down below. On December 1st, I used a mixture of the Reindeer Readathon reading prompts, a D20, and my local library um, in order to figure out what I was going to be reading for the month of December. Um, my husband picked nine books and I picked nine books to match each prompt. Um, and basically I used the D20 to determine whether I was going to be reading the book that I picked or the book that he picked. I somehow ended up rolling many more of his books than my own and I suspect that ghosts may have been involved. That being said, there are four books left that I need to read for this readathon. What is going on with my hat? When did this happen? I'm, I'm sticking with it. I'm leaning into this. I don't care. Totally on purpose. Okay, I lied. It immediately fell off like right after I said that. So I just put it back on. Anyway, the four books that I'm going to be reading for this part of the readathon include Wicked by Gregory Maguire. I just hit myself in the face with it. Um, this is for the Vixen prompt, which is basically choose a book that you want to read but you think might be overhyped, which, I mean, this is pr pretty overhyped. It's super hyped. I don't know if it's overhyped, but it's definitely hyped. The next book is Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. This is for the Comet Prompt, which is basically a book with an astronomical... Astronomical? It's astronomical. A book with an astronomical term in the title. Um, I'm going to say that Shadow and Night are close enough, okay? This next one I'm honestly not looking forward to. It's for the Donner Prompt, which is a book that you want to read, but you don't like the cover. So the thing is... I I arranged my books for the prompts for me. There was there was a miscommunication and my husband did them for him. So he chose a book that he wanted to read, um, but he didn't like the cover, basically. Um The one that I chose was Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, which I was I was looking forward to reading, honestly, but it's got this ugly pink, like ah, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't like it. I thought it was garish. I don't like the cover anyway, um, but I'd still like to read the book. Anyway, the one that my uh, wonderful, beautiful, delightful spouse chose is Housefrau by Jill Alexander S. Baum. I don't read erotica. I don't like erotica, unless you count fan fiction, maybe. Um, it does nothing for me. Uh, it's not a judgment on anyone else at all. Um, it just, most of it is so, so, so heteronormative and it just, I can't do it. It does nothing for me. I'm not interested in it. I'm going to try my best to read this though, but I reserve my right to DNF. I had no problem doing it with the Immortals and I think I had a pretty good reason for that. Um, hopefully I won't have to. Hopefully I'll actually end up enjoying this. But we'll see. The last book that I'll be reading is for the Rudolph Prompt, and it is the Destroyer comics, basically, by Victor Lavelle. This was another one that was picked by my spouse, but I am genuinely looking forward to reading it. Okay, now that we're done with all the intro stuff, let's get to the actual vlog. Um, I'm not feeling great today, actually, believe it or not. I'm just really not feeling great. So I am think I'm going to lay down, maybe, and take Wicked with me and start that. Um, and maybe flip through that for a little bit and see how I like it. Then I'll need to get back up and do some homework. 
because there's only like five days left in class or something like that. Not very long, and I have stuff that I need to do. Oh, it feels so good to take that hat off. I forgot how sweaty Santa hats get. I, I used to have to wear these. I've had to wear one for like two different jobs in the past, if I remember correctly. I had to wear one when I was working as a housekeeper in the hotel. That's right, while I was freaking running around, sweating my butt off, cleaning hotel rooms, I had to wear a Santa hat for a lot of it. Um, another one, actually like every cashiering job that I've had now I think about it, but in particular Walmart. Walmart was a stickler about it while I was there, um, like having us keep it on all day. And it was the cheap ones like this, so of course they were too tight. So then we were just uncomfortable and sweaty. And I kind of—I really hope that they don't do that anymore. That they don't make their employers wear Santa hats all day because that's—it's obnoxious. I'm using my selfie stick, but I always forget that I have it, and I can use it like. I can just swing it around town. I don't know. I think this is like my comfort zone. <laughs> Just having it this close so I can kind of control what's in the frame. I don't know. So I'm feeling a little bit better and I remembered that one of the bonuses for this readathon is to read an audiobook. So instead of continuing to read Wicked in the physical form, I'm going to just listen to the rest of it in audiobook probably. So I forgot that we have a Christmas party to go to. Christmas party right now but there are so many people and I don't know any of them <laughs> so I snuck outside and I'm just hanging out at the fire pit and it's really peaceful and I kind of wish I had my book right now and Ezra saw me sit down and start filming. Okay, she's, she laid down and is licking my hand instead. <laughs> so as I was saying, it is December 9th, um, so I haven't really done much reading um, at all because my brain doesn't seem to want to read this specifically. Um, like, I just, I can't get into it. So for now, I'm going to switch it out for The Book of Night by Holly Black. This is the book that I chose for this particular prompt. Um, I feel like it is probably overhyped, like I've heard things. I also have the audiobook for this, so I will kind of switch back and forth, but primar primarily probably listen to the audio one because I need to work on getting dinner ready and doing some cleaning and putting up clothes and doing homework because I've honestly been kind of depressed and haven't been doing as much as I should have. I forgot what I was saying for a second. And two, <laughs> because of the bonus uh, prompt. The readathon has bonuses, and one of the bonuses is um, reading an audiobook, basically. Hey, lady. You're so pretty. Right now, I'm still kind of waking up, though, so I'm going to drink my coffee and do some reading and just pet the cat for a little bit. <laughs> Maybe have some breakfast. I actually just remembered that it's my grandmother's birthday and I need to call her right quick. Hello. Happy birthday! Thank you. <laughs> you doing alright? Very good, how about you? I'm doing okay, you sound a little sick. I uh, just got a frog in my throat. Oh, okay, gotcha. Just making sure. 
<laughs> okay, so I finished my breakfast slash lunch slash whatever you want to call it. While I was on uh, the phone with my grandma, um, I'm going to start setting stuff out for dinner and setting things up. Okay, it's been a few hours. I'm about halfway through Book of Night by Holly Black. So far, I'm not super impressed. <laughs> Honestly, like, it's not the worst thing I've ever read, but it's just, it's not great. Right now, I'm about to head to Food Lion to get a couple of supplies. Um, I forgot that my husband was pretty much going to be out of, out of town tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go and grab a couple of things that I'll need during the day while he's gone. <laughs> So it is the evening of December 10th. Um, I have finished Book of Night by Holly Black. Um, it could have been a lot better. It had a lot of really cool creative ideas, um, but I don't think that she really used them enough. I also don't understand why she insisted on making this like an adult novel where there's, there's nothing about it that's adult really. It's the same length as a YA novel. There's the same amount of cussing, the same amount of sex, and the topic, like, the subject matter at hand isn't particularly adult either. I just don't understand what's adult about it other than just a name. I do definitely think that it was overhyped, um, but I also don't think it was as bad as some other people are saying. Like, some people are acting like it is just horrendous, worst book that they've read all year, and I really don't think it's quite that bad either. It's like a three-star read, you know? It's not a two, it's not a four, it's, it's right in the middle, it's like a three. Now I'm going to switch to Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. Um, I believe this book is more than 500 pages long. Okay, I checked and yes, it's 584 pages, so that will work for one of the bonuses, actually. And then Shadow of Night, I picked this one for the Comet prompt, which was a book with an astrological word in it. Shadow and Night are my astrological words. I'm hoping that they count. I'm kind of surprised at how excited I actually am to read this. Like, I didn't have big feelings about Discovery of Witches, and I didn't think I would even want to read the sequels. But yeah, now I'm kind of uh, intrigued to see what's going on with Diana and Matthew and Marcus and all of the other people whose names I can't remember at this moment in time. But I'm basically going to spend the evening reading this. Um, I probably won't do much recording tonight, because uh, there's not a lot going on. It'll just be hanging out with my cat, reading, maybe doing some homework. Good morning. It is December 11th and I unfortunately have to take Fenris to a new home. He and Ezra just don't get along, and it was starting to have a really negative effect on her. How you doing in there, bud? Are you cozy? Are you mad at me? I understand. I would be mad at me too. But yeah, so I'm probably going to be sad the rest of the day. I've been able to read maybe like a quarter of Shadow of Night, and it's pretty good so far. Um, not much to report there otherwise, though. We stopped, uh, because we're at the place where we're going to be meeting his new owner, and he is real confused. Hey, guy. I love you. He's very confused. He's been surprisingly quiet, though. Okay, Fenris has been dropped off with his new owner. He stayed grumpy the whole time, and I don't blame him. She seems really nice, though, and said that she was going to send me pictures and videos and stuff like that so that I can keep updated on him, as well as uh, Heather. Unfortunately, I now need to stop by Walmart to get a couple of necessities like cat food, deodorant, that kind of thing. And then I'll need to head home, do some homework, and try to finish this book, but I don't think that's gonna happen tonight. <laughs> So, 
fun addition to my day. Uh, first of all, yes, I'm wearing different clothes. I went home and changed, and I was going to do some homework at the library um, or at Starbucks, one or the other. Um, but yes, as I was on my way there, I stopped at a red light, as you do, and got hit in the behind, from behind, rather, <laughs> by a big white truck. So yeah, that was super fun. The girl who was in the truck was kind of... You could tell she was kind of a new driver. She was very young and very shaken up, and I kind of, like, I would feel bad if I was at fault here, but honestly, I wasn't. Um, I felt worse for the dog. Apparently, that is why she ended up hitting me, was because her dog was jumping on her as she was supposed to be uh, hitting the brake or something like that. Um, didn't end up having to call the cops, but we got each other's, like, insurance information and stuff like that. Um, made sure it was accurate insurance information gonna have to file a claim and all that jazz. I don't want to like show off our license plate or anything like that or I would uh, show you a video. Um, I took some pictures though for insurance purposes uh, so I'll just show them here with it blurred out. I was feeling perfectly fine before but now I am starting to get a headache and I'm just like kind of sore. So I'm sure I'm going to feel that tomorrow. December 12th um I'm kind of having a rough day honestly like I'm not doing great today um I'm really sore I've got a really bad headache um uh, my back hurts all the way up um I already have a bad back so it's just like the accident kind of exacerbated it um I also had a pretty bad nightmare about my abusive ex screaming at me, which hasn't happened in a long time, and I think it happened because of the accident, because I was just really rattled and afraid and worried about pissing people off. So, if I seem off today, that is why. I'm not sure how much like reading and recording I'm actually going to get done today, but I'm going to try. For now though, I'm going to have some breakfast, get some caffeine, try to get woken up. But when you get a chance to get out on something like that. I was interrupted. She's been more affectionate since Fenris got rehomed. I think it might be because she has more freedom to walk around now and do what she wants. He was kind of bullying her, honestly, which is part of why he had to get rehomed. Because she wasn't able to really just, like, exist in her own home. She's blipping so hard. I see her little tongue. <laughs> Good afternoon, it is the 13th and I am almost halfway through Shadow of Night. Um, I'm not really going to be able to film much today because I still have final stuff going on and just like, yeah. I won't have much time to update, but yes, I'm enjoying this so far as much as I can. So much of it has been based in just like so much romance <laughs> and so much sex and that's not quite what I signed up for, but I think it might kind of have to filter out a little. It's a long book. That can't be all this book is, right? It can't be. It's not bad though. I am enjoying it for the most part. Now I need to get ready for my psych final, so wish me luck. Oh my god. Really kick? <laughs> oh my god. What's wrong with you? <laughs> 
So Ezra woke me up this morning. She tapped on my shoulder. And then she did this. <laughs> she just tunneled into the blanket. Um, it's pretty cold in here, so that's probably why. <laughs> Are you comfy? It's like a little cave in here. Good morning. It is December 14th. I am halfway through Shadow of Night. Um, I did, I have finished all of my schoolwork. Like, I've done all my finals and stuff like that. Um, I haven't had a chance to just, like, rest since the car accident. Um, to just, like, legitimately just do nothing and rest. So, I'm probably going to do that today. I have the audiobook for Shadow of Night, so I'm going to play that, I think. Um... And yeah, just rest for a bit. Like, it's such a long book. I just, I kind of forgot how long it was. Um, <clears throat> I'm enjoying it so far, though. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that the second half will go faster than the first half, because it's kind of been a slog. Just ground some more coffee. I sat down to film and this happened. She's being so extra this morning. Good morning. It is December 15th. Oh my god, Ezra. I've tried to start filming like four or five times at this point and she keeps on interrupting. Ezra. Anyway, yes, hello. It is December 15th. I finished Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. I enjoyed it more than A Discovery of Witches, oddly enough. I didn't expect to. Um, I like time travel stuff. I'm a very, I'm a huge, like, Doctor Who fan. Um, Prisoner of Azkaban was my favorite Harry Potter book. Like, anything that involves time travel, I either love it or hate it. What are you doing? I guess you just had to change positions. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it enough that I kind of just want to start the next book right now. Um, but we're not going to do that. I might, I might like read it in the background, like listen to it on audiobook, uh, whenever I have free time. I don't know. Okay, I have my shoulders back. She's, she's in my lap instead. But yes, what I might do instead is I might go ahead and just like start listening to the third book on like audiobook. Um, and make that like my in-between read. Sometimes I'll pick a book to just like listen to on audio whenever I'm driving or washing dishes or using the bathroom or something like that and that'll just be like my in-between book basically. Are you comfortable here? Are you? That was for the comment prompt though, which I need to submit now that I think about it. I keep forgetting that I'm part of this readathon and I need to actually like submit my points when I'm done with a book. Also, I brought this book over here with me so that I could hold it up while I talked, and that just didn't end up happening because somebody, somebody decided that she wanted attention at that point in time. But yes, I do still have the library book. Um, and yeah, this is such a thick book. Ooh, I just realized this is over 500 pages. So that, um, I think that'll fulfill the last bonus that I need, so. Now to start Destroyer by Victor Laville, which is a comic book. So that should be interesting. Ooh. I love it. Keep talking. Tell me more. Tell me more, tell me more, does he have a shark? That's not a shark, that's a whale. This is the third page of the book. How dare you? How fucking d Yeah, same, same. See, this is what happens. So I legitimately just sat here and read all of that in one sitting. And um, that was rough, but it was really good. Okay, that means that I have read everything on my list other than House Frau. This is one of the books that my spouse picked for me, but guess what? 
We don't have a copy of it. He supposedly has one I'm going to give him until he gets home from work to provide me with a copy of it. And then if he is not able to actually provide me with a copy of this book to read, I'm, I'm going to switch back to my book by Riley Sager. I don't know what to tell you. You know what? No, actually, I'm going to go ahead and start this. And then if he does bring home Housefrau, then I will read it. But um, I already have this here now. I really want to do some reading right now for some reason. I'm kind of on a roll today and I don't want it to stop. So I'm just going to go ahead and start reading this. So I am a couple of chapters in and oh my god, this main character, she is speaking so much truth about what it is like to have to live paycheck to paycheck. I'm sure that some would say it's my own damn fault, that it was my responsibility. <laughs> Hi, honey. Okay, let's try this again. I'm sure some would say it's my own damn fault, that it was my responsibility to build an emergency fund. At least three months' salary, the experts say. I would love to backhand whoever came up with that number. They clearly never had a job with take-home pay that barely covers rent, food, and utilities. Because here's the thing about being poor. Most people don't understand it unless they've been there themselves. They don't know what a fragile balancing act it is to stay afloat, and that if, God forbid, you momentarily slip underwater, how hard it is to resurface. They've never written a check with trembling hands, praying there'll be enough in the account to cover it. They've never waited for their paycheck to be directly deposited at the stroke of midnight because their wallet is empty and their credit cards are maxed and they desperately need to pay for gas and food and a prescription that's gone unfilled for an entire week. They've never had their credit card declined at a grocery store, a restaurant, or a Walmart, all the while enduring the side eye of an annoyed cashier who silently another thing most people don't understand how quick others are to judge and make assumptions and presume your financial predicament is a result of stupidity laziness or years of bad choices they're getting by just fine and therefore can't comprehend why you're not capable of doing the same meanwhile you're left all alone to deal with the humiliation and the fear and the worry god the worry it's always there who that hit close that hit really close to home Ezra, are you okay? Four million dollars to the land before time, seven and a half million. <laughs> Though Disney's film would go on to be a huge financial success, it still demonstrated <laughs> the company's vulnerability. Balance to the world. He has a chance to help the world here and now, telling the banished prince that he reminds him of his older me? brother. And while it appears that a part she of Zuko wants arm. nothing more than to be able to find solace in a new family, into a remote town, chases down a corrupt authority, and saves its ordinary inhabitants. So it is technically the next day. <laughs> it's December 16th at 2 a.m. and I stayed up reading Lock Every Door and I didn't think that I was going to end up liking it. Like I got halfway through and was like, mm, I don't know if I'm actually going to end up enjoying this as much um, as I would like. But then I kept going and I actually kind of loved it. Like it's not a five star read, but I would say like at least a four. I thought this book actually kind of had something to say, which I didn't expect. This is the second Riley Sager book that I've read. What I've noticed is that he seems to like hidden passages and twist endings and stuff like that. Um, I didn't entirely like the way it was done in the last book that I read. Um, I don't even remember what it was called, um, but I like how it was done in this one. This was also the last book that I had to read for the Reindeer Readathon, so I'm going to end this particular vlog here. Um, I'm thinking that I'll probably do a third part that uh, just consists of me reading the books that I originally rolled, or the, the ones that are left over that I didn't already read, um, potentially. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think I should go on and read all the other ones that, I, uh, that were originally part of the pool? that because there are still a few that I didn't end up reading because I had to switch out a couple anyway I'll say that I'm not gonna go back and like read the immortalists or um I probably won't read wicked it just I don't know my brain could not retain the information it just didn't seem super interested at the time I need to go submit all of the things that I have read today <laughs>
um, in a form for the Reindeer Readathon. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys sticking around to do so, supporting me, all that stuff. Um, I hope that you are having a wonderful December, the happiest of holidays. Um, if you'd like to, then feel free to like and share and subscribe and all that jazz. Um, but what's most important to me is that you remember to love yourself.